thank you, Emir, for being here with us and for this uh, beautiful film. Um, maybe my first question would be, um, so how you decided to make this um, love story in uh, wartime, and at a certain point, the bride, she says, uh, love is the only thing that is worth even if, if, if it is impossible. You know, the, the my obsession with the war in ex-Yugoslavia is to fix mythology, because mythology about this war was absolutely a fake. The television broadcasted the idea that was creating a new world, not what happened on the earth. It's my second film about this uh, this time, and uh, with this movie, I think Portugal has a very special place historically. Uh, when the war started in Bosnia in March, it is by coincidence I was in in Sarajevo with Johnny Depp, who was that time not as big as he is today or yesterday, <laughs> and and. We were uh, trying to, this is how much we are stupid, like a Jewish people before the World War II b broke up, nobody believed they are going to be executed. So month before the war started, we were in Sarajevo trying to lobby for the festival in one of the mountains. And Ministry of Culture of Bosnia was rejecting to receive us, to speak to us, and I remember Johnny was uh, very sick with the throat, so my mother gave him medicine and he was very thankful to the end of her life. <laughs> we uh, went to Paris because it was a time when I was finishing Arizona Dream. And the war broke out one month uh, or month and a half later. Your politician called Cutillero was uh, breaking up the peace plan. The peace plan was supposed to be implemented on Bosnia and Croatia. And apparently, the president of Bosnia, Ali Izetbegovic, he accepted the peace plan coming back from Lisbon. And then he met with American ambassador uh, Warren Zimmerman, who was American ambassador in Belgrade, and after the meeting, he rejected the plan. So the war started. And we all know how much a uh, Serbian nation was accused of being guilty of doing all the wars, whatever. So my idea was to go to the roots of the humanity in which, uh, let's be honest, without Americans, we cannot speak about the modern world. So William Faulkner's sentence was one of the leading generators for this movie, which is what I am told the moment when I want to kill myself when the, when the shepherd is telling me, uh, you, uh, you stupid, if you kill yourself, you will never remember such a beautiful woman and uh, love. This woman who is up now and the uh, love. So, when you put all this together, you, uh, you give a certain chronology that brings you to the, the, the conflict of this movie, which is also very interesting. First, we made a short movie that was presented in Venice, I think, four years ago. Then, from the short movie, when I'm bearded, uh, we came to the beginning. And then beginning was very heavy, as you've seen. This film is made in the exterior 95%. And if somebody asks me why so long such a dramatic history that is helped and endorsed by the exterior uh, uh, look and, uh, and dramatic uh, graphic look of Herzegovina, which is south southern part uh, of Bosnia and Herzegovina or Republic of Srpska that is uh, close to the sea. You could see the sea from these mountains. And the film, uh, as a love story, is my second answer to 
what was the official mythology that is imposed by by all the media and by all what we were listening and watching i want to to leave the the space for for the love as a supreme human idea and you decided uh, since the beginning that you would be uh, you would play the the male character unfortunately i was chosen by uh, by the uh, by the protocol of having a short movie mm -hmm. And then by acting in the short movie, I was supposed to be in the long. And it's the, I promise it's the first and the last time that I do two things at the same time. But uh, one of, um, of uh, the directors that you like, and uh, here in the film you um, pay an homage to him, is Charlie Chaplin. You usually uh, uh, acted in his I really movies. do not understand how can somebody do these things, to speak to the people like this and jump to be audience and come back to be on the stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like you're playing all orchestra mm -hmm. yourself. It's really difficult. Mm -hmm. It was the big obstacle in this movie. I, You know, what saved my life is uh, probably what the, uh, it's my first digital film also that's why i didn't do it for so long time it's uh, something that keeps me uh, uh, i would say artistically alive but it was very difficult to overcome the problem of a digitalized world and relying on the fact that you know even if you just behave you could, by the definition of mise-en-scene, by definition of how you create the scene, you could be good enough to, to be a partner of Monica and other people inside. Mm -hmm. well, this is a very rare opportunity you have here. I think uh, now uh, we could open up to the audience for questions. Good afternoon. I just wanted to ask one simple question. Where are the animals saved during the filming? What, what was the question? Uh, were the animals safe during the filming? But I consider myself as an animal, so <laughs> we have a very good communication in between us. No, the animals, they, they are the trademark of my life and of my cinema. I rely on, on animals in the construction of every scene and I have a good friends in Serbia who are having a good relation with the bear, with the falcon, with the snakes. You know, when you live with animals, it's easy. Most of the animals are not CGI. There are just few which were not possible to, to be done alive. But once you feed properly animals, you become a friend, and you could go with any adventure with them. From snakes to, you know, after a while, after three, four months, we were keeping the most dangerous snakes in the, in the hands. I was keeping them here and for the tail, feeding the, the bear, hugging, and, and it was a real emotion exchange. The problem is that you have to try to escape the critical moment when they get uh, crazy. It's not the same like when people get crazy. <laughs> Hi. Um, we are used to watch films about war that are very dark and sad. Why did you choose to include fantasy in this narrative about war and love itself? You used to watch my movies very dark. Yeah. <laughs> No. No, 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 but... No, in, no, general, but in general, in general. But yeah, people yeah. do dark movies because it's the easiest way to look serious. <laughs> <laughs> and pe since they want to look serious, they don't mix uh, uh, the, the reality, which when it turns into the fiction becomes bigger than reality, which is in fact that most critical moments of human life are at the moment, very funny. There is a famous photography of the woman who just crashed Mercedes 
and who was uh, by accident photographed and she was laughing. So coming from this to a great Russian literature, you will always get this mixture of substance that leads to a mixed feeling in which very serious moments of death of somebody close to you could be watched from the other side in which the life is becoming triumphant and makes somebody laugh. And I think this is very dialectic, as we used to say in the past, when Marxism was very alive. Hi, good evening. My question is also about animals. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just wondering if the way if if the way you introduce animals in your movie, if you aim just to show the possibility of true partnership and even brotherhood between the species, or if the animals or if each of them each species has a specific meaning, a specific I think, symbology. I think the first Thank you. the first was the, the 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 right spot that you put, and I think the species species living together. I think it's the the solution for the for the planet because when you separate each from other you are doing something what we do to the nature today we are abusing the nature we are not living with the nature i'm living in the in the village in the mountains of serbia and i feed animals and i watch them and i i have this idea of mixing uh, species which comes from the place where I live, in which uh, the pine tree uh, and other three, four different trees are living very close to each other, which in human uh, experience, it's not, at least, it's not proven possible except some places where we had this kind of Babylonian idea, which is very biblical today. It, it's like, let's say, New York, but even today we are not sure if it is what we believed it's about. But I think the uh, mixing species was a very good point, and this is what I even, didn't even know before, and I'm now long life living man, that uh, mixing species might be his solution. And that's why probably in each movie I wanted to have myself and other people in between different people and the animals. Other questions? Um, hello, I'm in Costa Rica. Um, I'm very glad to see you. Uh, and uh, I, I would like to know, uh, where do you find your creativity? Creativity? If you, where do you get inspired? In the, fo in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> where do you find your creativity? Well, or is it is it all inside of you, or do you get inspired by other movies, or? You know, there is a theory. Uh, there were old-fashioned uh, Vienna psychologists. Uh, Sigmund Freud was the one who was defining psychoanalysis, but before him there was a Adol uh, Adolf Adler who was a, a kind of a behavioristic psychologist who said that people with uh, tiny legs and uh, with a big head disproportionately put all together, they have a, a need to prove what people who are very well developed and who looked beautiful and fantastic like ancient Greek heroes who don't. So those first category I think I belong to. And all my life I, have, I was supposed to prove that I'm nicer and better and more smart than the people who I saw around me when I was very young, not later. <laughs> and, uh, and I would say that uh, there is a force of life, or what they say in, in, in France, elan vital, which makes this kind of impulse but the moment of recognition of this impulse is even more important than, than the impulse that we, that we uh, could find. And I think I found it as early as I could. Uh, you know, 
my grandson is 12 years old and he's as tall as I am and he might be even stronger than I am and he's a water polo player. The only fear for the future of my grandson I have because he doesn't come from the poor family to make a big uh, sporting career. In art, I think it's, a, at least it used to be, a different. Once I recognized the sources of inspiration and the movies that I liked, books that I still read and reread again, I think the optical world is filled with many impressions that you have and the structure that is parallel to a drama that you recognize in the society and in the time that is also determined by some parameters. So you find yourself in between all these elements and use, uh, m uh, I would say, middle class, upper middle class uh, uh, kind of origin to go back to any class you want and then with this optical uh, strength, you could make movies. Music is different. Music is uh, something uh, even more eclectic than cinema. I'm speaking about the music that I play. And if you devote yourself to, to, uh, to art as I, as I did, then you find uh, creativity in the forest, on the road, and there are moments when your planets are just uh, putting big shadow on you when you cannot do nothing. And this is what happens to me in the last few years, before I started the movie. And even the, sh the shade, I was in the shade in the beginning and then in the end I think I came out. So you have obstacles, but to tell you the truth, as they say in America when they want to lie, frankly speaking, <laughs> I read a books and the main inspiration for my world of cinema comes from different different books that I read. Good evening, Emir. Thank you very much for being here and also for making movies like this one. I just uh, would like to ask you this question. You mentioned uh, the Americans a short while ago. I would like to know, how do you look into the Trump's election a couple of days ago? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I knew this was coming. <laughs> and we all have one parameter. I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm not aligned with all, all of uh, this kind of uh, fake leftist populistic ideas made by George Soros and the others in which everything else but Hillary Clinton is bad. I think uh, we are facing the new new time in which the chances for the war in between United States, NATO, and Russia is less dangerous than it was before. Because if she was representing uh, uh, what she did, we would be even closer to this. I'm not in favor of no power that is uh, coming on behalf of the American wealth, which is always dangerous because we know what happens in the last 50 years around the world. But, uh, you know, uh, calling names, people who think differently, and, and, and speaking about fascism of Trump, not mentioning the fascism of Clinton family, to me means uh, that you are avoiding the truth, which is very healthy for the social life. I know it's difficult to receive this, but this is what I think. You know, we were bombed, we were bombed, and we lost three and a half, four thousand people in the name of humanitarian law, but in fact it was how NATO could move from Munich to Kosovo not because of we, we Serbians are killers and the others are good. So this is inverted and I think we don't have to be scared as much I was scared before the elections. Finally, Michael Moore, who I believe very much in this uh, 
political projections when he was asked uh, three, uh, three weeks ago who will win, he said Trump. But you know why? I'll give you an additional explanation, which is sociologic analysis. 25 years ago, there was a guy who was speaking about danger in France and the United States and uh, Great Britain too. Once you start going for the corporations, means that you are drying out your own working class or whatever potential. So if Massachusetts is removed to South China, Americans are losing and Chinese are winning, which I don't have nothing against. But this is the truth that corporative capitalism is doing to Europe. Europe is overflown with immigration. I am immigrant too, so I don't have nothing against poor people who go. But there is a, a very nasty idea about how they come to Europe in order to destroy Christian culture. Unfortunately, this is the outcome of this uh, movement. Good evening, Mr. Kusturica. I'm a true fan of you, um, of yours, sorry. Uh, as a film student, um, I, I have something written now, and I'll be, try to be quick. Uh, you're such a, an influence for me. I'm honored to be speaking with you now. Uh, I've seen you such times, so many times, uh, playing live a lot of your work and how much I praise you. I, I wanted to tell you that first and thank the festival to this opportunity to be addressing you personally. And I would like to ask, uh, would you consider to shoot here in Portugal some day? I am impressed by your country, but you don't even understand how many times I played concerts here. <laughs> I, am, I am in Portugal at least uh, one or two times a year. And I'm enjoying the, uh, the communication with the audience here. Uh, you know, making movies, it's so difficult. And I believe that on this mentality, I could find any story to be done here. But make, uh, as I said, making movies is, is uh, something that it needs a power, it needs good energy, and unfortunately, it needs money. Today they want to create movies without money, which is impossible because if the time is money, you need a lot of time to make a good movie. So if we find somebody who is ready to go into this adventure to spend some money in the time, I'm, I'm very ready to come here because, as I said, mostly from music in the last 15 years, not just a few years, I am enjoying very much the closeness and the idea of uh, uh, emotion that works with the unity of people here. And finally, what I hear in Europe, everybody wants to come to Portugal. <laughs> everybody wants to come to Portugal because everybody is afraid of fascism, which was not attached to your country for the last 150 years. I mean, everybody was... I'm, I'm very much... I know that there were... There were but we they said in the World War One and World War Two, people were not as suffering as they did in, in Europe. Yeah, but we had the 50 years of fascism. You had the 50 years of something that it was imposed the same way that I'm speaking about fascism, but they speak about World War One and World War Two. During the World War Two and World War One, and when, I, when, when, they, when, when they justify their coming here, they want to go away from Western Europe to Portugal. This is up to you to decide what is the reason, not just me to, to make an estimate. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, going back to the, to the film, uh, Emir, I wanted to ask you if it's possible, what are the three uh, true stories um, that you mentioned in the beginning? If possible. The three stories, the three stories are real three, three stories. You know, there was a, a woman who worked in the peace of uh, Serbian territory in Croatia, who was really having a biography that was applied to Monica Bellucci. Uh, she was one of the most beautiful women in the whole area, and 
she left very young to uh, went to Italy and when she came back to look at for the uh, uh, for the father's traces she stayed and she started to be a spy for the Serbian side and there was a English general that after seeing her falling in love so hard that he even killed his wife by killing her, his wife he believed that she will be on his side, but she was, and this is not in the movie, she was uh, testifying against him in the English court. This is a really true story. And uh, she finished in Iraq. What a job she was doing there, we don't know, and she is now somewhere nobody knows where. She didn't finish like in the movie. Uh, second story is, very truthful story about Afghanistan war in which one Russian soldier was bringing the milk like I'm doing in the movie and he was saved by the snake that he was feeding with the milk who kept him at the moment when there was a slaughter in the military place where he was supposed to go. And the third story is about destiny of a man who was going all over Herzegovina with 1,000 sheep from city of Konitz, which is, which is very close to the seaside, up till uh, Visegrad, which is a central eastern part of Bosnia. So he went uh, pushing the sheep through the minefields that he knew existed. So he was sacrificing sheep like in ancient Greeks people used to do for the religious ritual and he uh, has saved his life thanks to the sheep. So these are the true basic and everything else is whatever happens when you start shooting and exchanging angles and imagining what could be the best for the movie. And he decided to call uh, the woman the bride because of this mysterious... I wanted to avoid the, the, the elements for which I was accused when I was doing uh, uh, Life is a Miracle. In Sarajevo, I was accused of doing anti-Muslim movie, which on one hand could be understandable because they suffered a lot by being uh, closed in this city. But on the other hand, it was too long. They couldn't recognize that the intention was good. So that's why I wanted to make it not marked by realistic elements. The problem today with cinema is even if you do it, everybody knows to what history you could apply the film, which is what happened to this film. Further questions? Uh, good night, Emir. <laughs> I'm from your country, I'm from ex Yugoslavia, and I'm very happy I want to thank you for this beautiful movie. Um, and um, I'm very proud to have you. I mean, proud to have you like some artist on some artistic way. Um, I'm artist as well, and I made the theater plays about our country here in Portugal. Came here because of war. But so I, I now a lot about your movies, a lot about war, a lot about Yugoslavia, but I want to ask you something really different. Why Monica Bellucci? <laughs> <laughs> so, why it, it was some desire from young days, or <laughs> you know that is a tricky humor from ex Yugoslavia, but uh, all that Serbian that are here wants to know that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, af I'm afraid this is a very typical uh, female question. <laughs> <laughs> no, Monica Bellucci was uh, to, to have an icon, icon which is a real icon in the world today, not to compare the beauty, but to just to bring the idea of somebody who could be entering the world with a biography that brings Italian roots and which is also applied to applicable, as we say in English, to the story that I was imagining. 
I must tell you that uh, I was very afraid of casting her and speaking about her as a package to bring even money thanks to her. But I was afraid of uh, a woman who was very much and very often uh, uh, more or less being situated and with playing with no mise-en-scene. But I must say that long time made her uh, behaving very well in the space, which is the main obstacle with the beautiful women. So she was a real decision to have a beauty that is iconic, but applicable to a story in which uh, the origin of woman is mixed Ser uh, Serbian with a father who was Italian, which, uh, as I said in the beginning, it's mainly a female question always, mm -hmm. to which I answer like a, not like a man, but like a director. <laughs> Boa noite, o meu inglês não é muito bom e estou um bocadinho nervosa. Um, a pergunta é, uh, numa entrevista que deu um canal televisivo argentino há uns anos... Em uh, uma an entrevista que você deu a um canal argentino há alguns anos Falou acerca do cinema e da forma como se sentia marginalizado. Você falou sobre o cinema e da forma como você era marginalizado. In a very outsider, like an outsider, and the way, uh, the forma como os Estados Unidos colaboravam para criar filmes que não nos obrigavam a pensar. And the way the United States did uh, films. <laughs> the way, the way uh, the United States. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, made films that uh, uh, were made uh, uh, for us not to think about. Uh, acha que o caminho do cinema uh, deve ser só do entretenimento ou do, deve? Do you think the way for the cinema will be only entertaining or? Ou que deve abordar também questões políticas, religiosas e or sociais? Should, should it approach uh, religious uh, uh, and political issues? Ou que o público prefere filmes que não os obriguem a pensar. Or the audiences uh, prefer films that don't make us think. But you know, I mean that uh, even I not, I didn't fully understand your question, but I will try to synthesize what you said. Cinema today is in great danger because we are multiplying the number of films, but we are not augmenting the quality of cinema. Why? Because we are facing new reality in which cinema is uh, a live streaming, cinema is in the TV series, and language of cinema is changed. Uh, people are pushed to make quick, less expensive as possible. If you have money, money is spent for the stars, not for the length of shooting in which you could explore and you could achieve your uh, goals in the space and time. And if we are facing the real drama that we live all over the place today, we have it on television reports much more dramatic and much more direct, which is the modern man request than to wait somebody observes and creates on the big screen. So we, we are having a statical problem we are facing the problem of financing, and we are problem, facing a problem of Hollywood, which gives us a shape of cinema that is absolutely unacceptably stupid. We are facing a movies which are mostly diverting our mind from the goals of our existence. We are not uh, achieving the uh, catharsic moments which are coming from real problems which include religious, uh, political, any, any other uh, problem that is of ideological origin. And that's why cinema is dan in danger. But I hope young people will find a way to, to give us the answer to what we cannot answer today. Other questions? Returning to books, I read that you decided to invest 
in a small village dedicated to Ivo Andrich, the Nobel Prize writer from your country. Why? That I wanted to invest. I finished. You finished it. You create a small crea city create dedicated a, to a writer. I created two, uh, but I, not I didn't finance. I just created. I created a, a wooden village in which I live, and 25 kilometers away on the other side of Drina River, I wanted to pacify the place by creating a city dedicated to a writer. And it's functioning, it's working, and it needs to be improved. And I think in the future, with such artifacts, they are going to be very much and much more reluctant to to kill each other when they have such a such a, a reminder of the past and missing renaissance which missed Bosnia and Herzegovina and we never had it like you have even in your country here if you are from here hello um, thank you so much for your film I'm curious intrigued by two scenes the first one has to do with the clock with the second one, the clock. A clock. The clock, yes. <laughs> and the second one has to do with that song. Uh, the first one, the, before the, um, the agreement, that was about the big brother that was keeping and maintaining the war. <laughs> and I'm intrigued by, I'm curious about that. You are very, so you, you're curious about the right things. The clock is invented like surrealistic element of uh, a life of people who bites just the women. And it was uh, something that came to my mind speaking to uh, another man, how today you face so many women and the men going to correct their, their faces and the way they look like. And it's very touching to me. I'm not against this. I just don't think, I don't find the reason why people try to fix. And then I remember that, in fact, the major parameter of the antique Greek culture was perfection. So probably when people look at themselves in the morning into the mirror, they miss some kind of perfection. But time, anyway, makes the scarf of anybody. You know, uh, this morning I was sitting at the hotel terrace and there were different generations. As many wrinkles and as many scarves on the faces of women and men, more gold I've seen on all of them. <laughs> as less of what I was believing they had to be a more normal it's changed in our time. So this kind of bunuelistic idea that a clock bites uh, a woman in this Austrian-Hungarian remain of empire was, I found, a good element of conflict because both women come to get operated in the same place. And this is a kind of resolution of what was a war time. And wartime uh, somehow becomes a natural ingredient of humanity, unfortunately. And I thought that everybody has this kind of exterior, interior connection which contributes to any, any, any beginning of any end of the war. And this was uh, kind of playing with the symbols that are not very much uh, familiar today in cinema. What was the other? The, the song of the big brother. Where they the big brother is devoted to a big brother. <laughs> <laughs> big brother who creates the war around the world. We know who it is. At least you know. So, hello. Good evening. Um, sorry. <laughs> so, I wanted to speak about the birds. Uh, when we meet uh, the Italian girl, uh, we see her watching a movie with a scene with the birds flying and she's crying 
and then we understand why, because she's a fugitive and she wants to be free. And um, I think that the bird that was always with you in the movie, uh, there was a scene uh, when you were with her and the bird came to, to your head and you told him, go away, <laughs> to go away. Um, but he always came back. And then um, the Italian girl died and she flied away. And she will never come back like your bird in the movie. So I think that's, that was really touching for me. The, the connection that you can, can do in your films between scenes that we don't think that um, have no fundamental uh, explanation, and it has. So I wanted to thank you for that, for making me think, not uh, making me want to see these kind of movies and not Hollywood movies. Like, <laughs> um, and yeah, that was it. I, I, I just want to thank you for something that every filmmaker making a movie he relies on the fantasy and on the perception of people like what you just said, in which we initiate the idea and then the question of the image affecting you and the, the acts that are just following one after the other and developing the history. I must tell you that bird in the script does not exist. The bird was coming after I, I reshot three times the beginning. And the bird came as an angel guardian who comes to keep me and to save my life in the end when the love, life, when the love falls at the moment, but love that, that gives birth with another level of love, which is the rest of the life of the main hero. But the bird is one of the strongest elements of this story, which is part of the fantasy, not of what happens in the life. I always believe that Falcon, who was on the shoulder of the holy people and the Tsars, deserved to be portrayed as, uh, as somebody who, at least in the visual world and the symbolic world, represents love, strength, and the friendship too, which is on the opposite side from when he says, go away from me because he is falling in love and he doesn't need the help. But then the bird that is not rational is just following and as I said, as an uh, idea of an angel guardian who follows the, the, the character to the end and saves his life. And even in the end, when they together go to cover the place uh, for 15 years by hands and going over the mountain, seven mountains and seven fields to come to, to level the, the place where she died, the bird is the falcon. The falcon is the, the historical symbol of humanity, inter interpreted in many ways. I wanted here to show that uh, this was a very good point about uh, mixing species, and I will use in the future this very often because this is uh, something that, especially with the bird, makes big sense to me. Hi. Um, I'm very glad to see you so close, <laughs> the first hand. Um, I would like to know, it's nothing to do with the film, really. Um, what do you think we have in common? I mean, uh, the Serbians and the Portuguese. I would like to know because for me it's like we still very co far away. <laughs> we still contain a certain level of spontaneous mm -hmm. uh, communication and spontaneous life that we don't find in, in, in Western Europe. We still have a chances to uh, let things surprise us, let things happen. Uh, we still have uh, in common not such a strong discipline and dependence of 
consumerism and all symptoms of the life today and we still have kind of emotion that is not channelized and directed as the other nations do, at least in Western Europe. Yeah. She has to go, she has to leave. She's speaking Serbian. But he, she speaks Macedonian, which is yeah. one of those languages. Živela. <laughs> you see? What is the advantage of understanding somebody from Macedonia? Follow it. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for your movie. Thank you for, for this wonderful piece of art. I'm almost amazed I, can, I cannot speak. And in the end of the movie, the end is is better than Taj Mahal, so <laughs> it's it's incredible. Uh, I, when I remember a few years ago, a lot, long time ago, I saw Underground, and I thought it was one of the great movies about war, and this one too. So thank you. I'm a little bit nervous because I really like your work. I want to ask you how you work with actors. I think the cast is beautiful for the Lady West, for Bellucci. Monica Bellucci, I think she's great for the part. And you are a great, great actor. Thank you. And uh, do, yes, <laughs> you, do, you work very well in the movie. And how do you work with actors? Do you rehearse a lot? Do you, how do you manage to work with them, with these creatures? You know, in creating a film, you need a, a lot of time. And uh, the idea of director is very shamanistic. A film director is a shaman. Or let's say in the modern language, uh, I call it sweet dictator. <laughs> because if you don't create good mise-en-scene and if you have no time to exercise mise-en-scene, because you could exercise with actors long time before when it comes under the light into the space it's, it's lost if you have no time to observe, to doubt, and to improve, and to change, to reshoot, and to do like people do uh, beautiful books. And uh, the, there is no system, and there is no uh, written uh, protocol how I do it. But I do it uh, with a great passion and the love that I think needs to uh, needs to exist before you start creating space movements, which is called mise en scène, that determines connection in between people and gives a chance to people to express themselves as strong as possible. I think we are. No. Yeah. Just one more question. One more question. That's it. One more, and we finish. Uh, hello, I mean, it was a pleasure to see the Falcon shots, and my question is very simple. It was naturally made, or it was CGI? What? The Falcon shots, the very close-up Falcon. A Falcon shot is uh, all made. There is no, uh, uh, to which scene, I, I don't want to make mistake, 95% uh, of scenes with animals, except the big snake, which was impossible to do, not because I'm afraid of big snakes, but when you get a big snake, she could be just not reacting well. <laughs> or she could, she could get you uh, like whatever. The falcon is absolutely made in reality. I lived with the falcon. I was punching him, kicking, uh, loving, feeding. He was escaping from me, coming back. All secret of cinema is in the relation between talent and time and space. If you have time, if you love the space and people around you, you have a great chance to good, make a good movie. Thank you very much. Thank you.